please like, comment, and subscribe. Hi, my name is Thomas and I am in New York City and I have a question for Ikaya. It's about dreams. What are dreams? And what is the spiritual purpose of dreams? And how can we use them in our spiritual work and explorations to fully utilize them as a spiritual tool? Thank you. The world of dreams is a fascinating one. And I think most people um, throughout the ages have wondered what dreams really are. Are they just, you know, imagination, fantasy, or are they real? The answer is they're both. They have two major components. First, it's what's happening in the brain and the human mind. Now, remember that most of the brain and brain functions are part of what one would refer to as a subconscious. The aware part of the brain is very small. Almost the whole brain is a network of functions and programmings that run on autopilot. And that's not a problem. We should be happy about that. So you don't have to think about your heart beating or your organs you know, functioning. So the exchange and the process in the brain is mostly subconscious. Now, in the aware mind, you know, that's where you have your experiences. You are actively dealing with the world. And you do things and you experience um, things. And then you need to process. Because the new information is basically for the brain. It's like a keyhole looking through the keyhole. And then the mind will take in that information, try to figure out what is this. And that is basically what the subconscious mind is doing. It's trying to process, analyze, and measure this new information to what it already knows. So, so the subconscious mind is, is predominantly uh, DNA-based. It's genetics, it's memories, all, all of that which is kind of the, the background and the template that you then operate by in your aware mind because then you have the sense of self and you go in the world and you interact based on that template. And then the brain can experiment and see, okay, is this really, is this functioning? Is this helping us in survival and achieving what we want? <clears throat> so there is this communication between the aware part of the brain and the subconscious where the subconscious represents the programmings, the experiences, uh, genetics, and, and so forth. So, when you switch off uh, the aware part of the brain, which is, you know, the part that is here, testing out what you think you know, the learning interaction, when that happens, the subconscious brain, subconscious mind can then process that information. So then it will be tossed back and forth and mirrored and measured uh, up against what it already knows. Because we always have to adapt and part of the, the brain is it adapts to new information. But then it has to understand what is this. So the brain will try to explore information. And just think, think of like at a university, you have different like scientists, for instance, you know, and there's a new piece of information and historians will look at it, you know, uh, physicists will be looking at it, mathematicians will be looking at it. And that's really what's happening in the brain. So you have new piece of information and the brain says, okay, what is this? And it will activate different parts of itself. Um, to try to figure out what this information is and how to relate to it and what conclusion 
to be drawn from that experience. Um, so it's that, this kind of internal um, exploration and communication that's happening. And the way the brain does this is multidimensional. And this is kind of a language of, of senses. So it will create these scenes where you are kind of like testing out and kind of re-experiencing and processing and dealing with what you're going through. And it will be a combination of, of programmings combined with kind of what in your daily life is kind of going on. So it becomes this lab of kind of new and old information interacting. That's one level of it. And this is the major part of your dreams. So it's internal communication in your mind. But when that part of your brain that is connected to this reality in the projection that creates this reality, when that's switched off, your subconscious mind is less connected to this because this is a defined kind of dimension and space. But the reality in which we exist, it's much broader. So this is when, why, when we switch that awareness off, the subconscious is more free and less limited um, to like how it connects. And that's why you in your dream also communicate with other levels of consciousness, other levels of reality. And you can exchange and you can have experiences that then becomes this, the same as your brain relates to with you know, the keyhole that is looking out into this reality. It can do the same in other realities. So you will have experiences and dreams consisting of both what's going on in your daily life, your DNA, your programmings, but also influence of information from other types of dimension and reality that you have access to. It can also just be your own, like higher mind, higher self, whatever you want to call it. So it will be this melting pot of trying to figure things out. And the same way that you are influenced by this dimension, you know, that you experience, you are also influenced by what is coming through you from your higher levels. That is also part of it. This is what we call the vertical consciousness. And this is the horizontal. So the subconscious mind is in the middle. It both relates to the horizontal world, but also the vertical one. So the dreams you have in your dream world is that melting pot where information and experience from like both will be combined and then processed through DNA programming's experience. So therefore, sometimes you can have dreams that are more connected to the vertical, and then often you will have the, these more spiritual experiences, and meeting spiritual beings and you have the, these vivid dreams of, you know, light and wisdom and spiritual energy and all of that. And sometimes your dreams are extremely physical. So it really depends on what kind of information, um, you know, is, is being processed in the dream. Um, so it's not just one thing. You know, it, it, can, it can take many forms, many expressions. And... It's fun to play with. And just like any other practice, the more you focus on it, the more it will expand. Because the thing is, what you remember from your dreams will then be the information from the subconscious part being projected into the, the uh, um, awakened awareness that, that is your kind of daily self. And that connection 
is not as important. The other way, you know, uh, you being the, the, the self, being out in the world, getting new information, that's really what it's about. So from, so, so from that level of self into the subconscious, that's a super highway. That's working already. The other way is just, you know, a little trail for, for most people. That can be expanded into a super highway as well, but it takes practice. And it means that you have to work with your dreams. And one thing is to you know, uh, write them down, try to interpret them, and try to learn how to deliberately bring topics and issues into your dream world. Um, this is a full workshop in itself, but there are many techniques you can use to widen that path of communication uh, between your kind of dream world and your conscious physical awareness. And then it becomes this fun lab where you can bring things in to process and you can strengthen the connection also with a vertical. You can have the most wonderful experiences. And it's a combination of reality and fantasy. You know, but it can be so much fun. And because it's connected both vertically and horizontally, you can learn a lot. You can also have real encounters with other beings and other people as well. Um, it's, it, most people um, throughout their lifetime will have experience of dreams that were real. They've met other people and it was very physical and what they talked about turned out to be something that later manifested. Stuff like that. Yeah, because that happens too. It's simply then a matter of you being in connection with someone, being in that exchange. And because your subconscious is then not as limited to kind of your physical life, it can open up to how you are already connected with other individuals and that exchange and that information will be part of it. So um, many people experience, you know, dreams that turn out to be real. Uh, sometimes they can predict the future. Um, they can also process the past because time is not real. So you can go back and forth on the timeline because without the definition of this, your mind is free to move around. And this is also something you can actively practice. So think of your kind of dream world as enormous potential. It's both a lab and it's also an amusement park. Uh, and you can turn that into a wonderful uh, spiritual tool. But you have to apply techniques and you have to train. Just like with meditation, you have to do it every day. Uh, with any practice, if you want to be good at it, it, it takes work. So dreams, for most people, is basically just like a almost dormant potential. Um, by practicing over time, you can get to that point where basically when you fall asleep, you dream the whole time. And you can also learn to wake up in your dream. So it's basically going from one dimension to another. So, okay, my body's asleep, let's go to work, and you go into that reality, and then you, you just wake up. And all your dreams become, you know, when, when you have dreams that are so real and alive that you think that you are awake, and you're also aware that I'm asleep, but this is real, that kind of thing, that can be permanent. And you can then decide in that space what you want to do because when you wake up in that consciousness you can then decide what to create what to dream about who to interact with and it's as fun as if it happened in this horizontal reality so it's just part of relating to um, the existence but in a more flexible way and when you learn to kind of wake up in that dream space, multidimensionality and like flexible reality is just how things work. 
and you can learn and see the result of when you focus your mind, things happen that way. When you like do a little bit of this, it happens that way. So you can learn many of the kind of the, the spiritual skills in that space because matter is not as dense. It's an extension of your mind. It is here too, but it's more dense and it's slower. So it's not as simple as it is in your dreams. So I would say, yes, if you enjoy dreaming, it has an enormous potential. You just need to learn how to do it. And that can be done. I know there are like a lot of modern books uh, in dream work and all of that. And we will also look into, at some point, uh, launching a kind of training program for this as part of this ever-expanding toolbox uh, of, of the tools and approaches you can use to make your spiritual journey as fun as possible and to nurture that spiritual explorer that you are. Mm -hmm.